summer of 2020, I decided I was going to attempt something different with my own property. Obviously, I haven't been treating lawns for a living anymore, so sometimes I just miss getting out there and messing around and flexing the old lawn care wings, if you will. So this year, particularly this winter and spring, it wasn't an exceptionally cold winter, but it was odd and a little late when the temperature started dipping. I had a really bad flood that spring and fortunately it did not make it to my house, but the entirety of my backyard was 100% underwater. So it dawned on me that with it being flooded, if I did not put down pre-emergent, I knew it would be pretty bad looking as it made its way towards spring green up and eventually a growing green summer. So I went ahead and made the determination. I'm going to let it go as long as possible and then attack it and see just how quickly I could produce a high quality lawn starting from nearly scratch. So the year of 2020 became my 45 day challenge to turn my lawn from its worst condition it's ever been since I moved in to its former glory. It began dealing with just an incredible amount of weed pressure. Again, no pre-emergent had been applied. And so after the flood, you could really see just a variety of different weeds coming in. There's quite a bit of hairy bittercress, quite a bit of henbit, lots of wild onions, a little bit of horseweed was coming in, cudweed, just a pretty nice crop of different grassy and broadleaf weeds. Because of the pressure from the grassy and broadleaf weeds, I was choosing what I was going to be going out with first. A couple of things I had to take into consideration was the temperature. You know, I had a frost as late as May 10th, but by the end of the week, I was going to be into the 70s, 80s, and even 90 within the next seven days. Again, I had a pretty diverse group of weeds, plantains, clover, already nut sedge was coming up, button weed was coming up. Dallas grass from my previous attempts at controlling it uh, had started to reemerge uh, re after about three years or so. Lots of fescue clumps in both Poa annua and Poa trivialis. And then kind of the last concern that I had was the density of the turf underneath. I knew previously I'd had a pretty dense stand of turf, but with it being underwater, the late frost, I was concerned about just how much of it would still be there, how much of it would turn green. So considering the weed pressure I had and the temperatures that I was soon going to be facing, I put together what I was going to apply. Now, starting with a lawn application in May, I've really passed my point of pre-emergent. My soil temperatures at this point were well above 55. And so I decided that making this late of an application, I was going to go ahead and use Dithiapir. Now, I was interested more so in the potential of post-emergent weed control of crabgrass. So I made sure I was going to run the high rate of Dithiapir, that being two pints per acre, with a surfactant. In this, in this instance, I ended up using uh, the PS804 surfactant by Prime Source Select. It's a good product. It's an acidifying surfactant. It's a, it's a generic LI700. Now, for post-emergent weed control, 
I was kind of back and forth on different things, right? But I finally settled on Monument. And the reason why I settled on Monument is the diversity among broadleaf and grassy weeds and sedges. And because I had such high density of all of those, I went ahead and chose Monument at 15 grams per acre at the high rate. Because of the diversity of broadleaf weeds, I wanted to go ahead and use a three-way kicker as well. The next part of my mix was going to be a full rate, one and a half ounces per thousand, 64 ounces per acre of a generic three-way. And then I was a bit, uh, I wanted to add a kicker to it just because I'm working on such a tight time schedule. I'm trying to flip this in 45 days. And so I was debating uh, between Carfentrazone and Sulfentrazone. But I ended up choosing Carfentrazone just because I was so concerned with the density of the turf I had underneath the weeds. I was afraid that if I added Sulfentrazone to an already hot mix, it would set it back for an exceptionally long period of time that I just didn't have in this scenario. Within 48 hours of the application, you could already see the results. Again, adding the Carfentrazone to that mix accelerated the results of, uh, accelerated the action of the other herbicides that I included in the tank. One thing I'll note is that the surfactant I used, the PS804, was probably a poor choice in terms of ROI. Uh, as an acidifying surfactant with a sulfonylurea like Monument is not a good thing because sulfonylureas are typically de degraded or they lose solubility in acidic solutions. So probably a bad call there on my part, but it was at least what I had at the time and uh, I knew I could still get fairly decent results. The next thing I had to do was actually get a push mower. Uh, I did not have one, had a real mower. So I went uh, to a local place here and I found, I don't know, a uh, one of the lower end ranges, Toro Super Recyclers. And it came in handy because, of course, I needed to scalp all these weeds that I had just sprayed and just get an accurate representation of what I had underneath. So when I got the mower, I came back, I dropped it to its lowest setting, and I went ahead and just cut all the dying vegetation away to get an accurate representation of what was going on. As you can see, it didn't look exceptionally well. It was much thinner than I anticipated, and the density of the weed pressure had obviously slowed the green up of the rest of the lawn. I get a little nervous, but I said, well, the only thing you can do is run with it, right? I had avoided applying any nitrogen up to this point, and so after a few days of starting to see the action on the weeds, I went ahead and I applied about a pound of actual nitrogen on may the 16th i had carbon x on hand so i went ahead and applied that it was around this time four days after application you could see the yellowing that was taking place in the turf because of the carfentrazone Carfentrazone is one of those things that I love it or hate it when you're applying it at low volume. There's just going to be a little bit of discoloration. So I knew that going into it and I was hoping to go ahead and push it out with applying that heavier rate of one pound of actual nitrogen. The next day I received my first rain. Actually that, that afternoon, that night I received my first rain and uh, watered it in. And within a day or so, I could already see uh, some new vegetative growth stimulation, especially moving into day two. And so I went ahead and was continuing to mow relatively regularly at this point uh, where I was mowing every day. Again, with just the push mower at this front, at this point, at its lowest setting, which is about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, somewhere around there. I wasn't measuring, I was just cutting. Now, with the Trifloxy Sulfuron application, the Monument, I knew I could cause some of the discoloration in the greening up Dallas grass that I saw, but I knew it was not going to be a good fit to offer complete control of it in a single Monument application. Previously, I had controlled the Dallas grass by doing a Monument application followed by Tribute followed by Tribute. And so, 
I wanted to go ahead and get started on controlling this Dallas grass because of the short time frame that I was working on. In this particular instance, even though I likely should have waited two weeks before making the application, I went ahead and made it just a few days after my initial application. So I applied tribute total at 3.2 ounces per acre. And in this instance, I actually had, uh, I found uh, some MSO and organo silicone blend. Again, another product from Prime Source Select. I had it in a little squeeze bottle. So I utilized that at 1% by volume. And I threw in a handful of soluble ammonium sulfate just to act as uh, the catalyst for the tribute total. I was expecting quite a bit of damage from the tribute application, especially after everything else that I had applied from it. But it was actually doing relatively well. I was not seeing a lot of discoloration to the turf. And I feel like because it was already under regulation and stress from the monument application, there probably wasn't a whole lot of compounded damage by the tribute application. It was at this point I went ahead and made the switch after about two weeks to the real mower. And I dropped the height to about a half inch and started cutting there. Temperatures really started to climb here and the grass was actually really starting to grow pretty aggressively. So I decided I was going to go ahead and make an application of growth regulator. Now the turf was still, it still lacked quite a bit of density, but I, I, I in my effort to uh, work within the time strengths that I gave myself of 45 days, I, yeah, I knew it was risky. I knew it was incredibly risky and it was beyond my level of comfort for risk, but I figured I'm going to go ahead and swing for the fences and we'll see what ends up happening. So at this point, I went ahead and made an application of growth regulator. And this was a bit of the first mistake that I made. I should have waited before I applied the growth regulator, but I didn't. And by not waiting and going ahead and applying it, of course, you lock in the damage that is occurring uh, from the herbicides. Now, it didn't exactly destroy my lawn, but it did absolutely zap the color out of it incredibly bad and at this point my mowing frequency where it still wasn't quite under complete and total regulation was every day and so i started to develop a track around the perimeter of my property where i would make my perimeter mowing passes and it was simply just due to the amount of traffic it was getting from cutting every day I knew this was an issue and being concerned with traffic recovery at this point, my own traffic recovery, I opted to go ahead and make uh, another fertilizer application, but this time I did things a little different. Not only did I put down another pound of nitrogen, I also applied uh, via spray, I, spr I sprayed some potassium phosphate and the next day, I went ahead and made an application of MFT as well. It was after this application, you could see things really starting to wake up. Uh, it began to progress pretty aggressively over the next week to week. And by week number two, I was really starting to build some density. And the lawn was finally turning that corner. And the color had come back after that aggressive growth regulator application. I'll say this, that I have common Bermuda and the growth regulator rates that I use was definitely way too aggressive for what I needed to be doing. It was about a week after this, I went ahead and I made another application of potassium acetate and I made an application of foliar zinc. I did a chelated zinc application. And it was with this final application here that uh, a lot of the initial effects of the growth regulator had warned off and the color had really began to return to the yard. So this being day 45, here is the final picture. And we will compare where we started to where we are here. Now I bring this up to show that no 
matter what it is you're facing, it's never too late to get started. And with a little bit of planning, a little bit of thought, and a little bit of effort, you can make some significant changes really quickly. So I hope you enjoy the video. We'll see you on the next one.